Today is an important day in the EDSAC reconstruction. We're going to move the entire arithmetic unit where it's been built here in Cambridge by Nigel Benny across to Betchley Park. It's three racks full of chassis, nearly a quarter of the machine, and Nigel has designed and built the entire thing over the past several years. So this is 25% of the machine, except for this bit. This bit is actually 75% of the machine, so this modern electronics microprocessor controlled stuff simulates the whole the other 75 percent of the machine so that's talking to me and i have to change it for individual tests you sort of modify it so that's 75 percent of the machine in the alu the most important part <coughs> is these five chassis from here to here one two three four five that's the accumulator, and that's where the result of a computation is stored constantly. So the accumulator is just cycling through there all the time. So that's the only function that this performs is addition and shifting. Now shifting doesn't happen all the time. Addition, the adder is adding. Every time the data goes around, the adder is adding in zero. So it will keep going forever with the same value unless we inject another value, which comes in here. And this, this particular unit collects information from lots of different places and adds it into that loop. These bits for, for uh, subtraction, that's for multiplication, and these two at the top are for telling the rest of the machine I finished, basically, and for doing jumps. Most of this rack, almost entirely, is to do with multiplication. That's a multiple can, multiplier register, that's a multiple can register, the bits and pieces that deal with that. This is a control register that does the timing. This is one of Wilkes's most, uh, the thing he's most proud about is the rounding unit, which gives you that just that little extra bit of precision. And then down here we have, that's just a support unit. And these two are control units, which basically control um, the multiplication and shifting, along with this one, which controls basically addition, subtraction, and whatever. These extra ones here are to do with the ed edge effects uh, at the end of a multiplication, because you can have various combinations of positive or negative numbers. That's got to be sorted out. There's also in here some circuitry for the, uh, the telephone dial input which is just a convenient place to put it and this one or this one generates the, uh, the two different sets of signals for, for the basic timing signals and these are just buffers so in a nutshell that's described all what i've got hello nigel are you ready for us to move the arithmetic unit ah. Absolutely. I'm look, looking forward to getting my lab back. How long is it taking you to design and build it? About four and a half years since our original meeting. We met in the pub, didn't we? The Panzanal was in Cambridge. Surprise, surprise. Yes, so we did. <laughs> yes, you, you contacted me. You'd heard about the project. And uh, I said, let's get together. And we had several pints of beer, at the end of which you found yourself Timothy assigned. Taylor, I believe. I believe it was Timothy Taylor's. <laughs> And you yeah. found yourself assigned to design and build this part of the machine. Yeah, I mean, your initial... Um, requirements for the half adder to be done because it's used about four times in the machine you uh, you wanted one of these because several people would be using it but it rapidly became obvious that the whole thing really stood alone as you can see and that um, I volunteer to <laughs> <laughs> to do the whole ARU. Very good so how many chassis are there roughly? In 20, the... 29. 29. So gosh multiplier memory units, multiple can shift registers there's really quite a lot there, isn't there? You've been able to develop this entirely here in your laboratory because actually it has a very simple interface to the rest of the computer. Yeah, that's It operates correct. more or less autonomously. Also doing development like this. I mean, the technology, although when I was a teenager I did play with valves, to actually develop something like that is very, very iterative. I couldn't have done it 50 miles away. It had to be here in my own environment, with my own facilities. Right. Excuse me, 
the other side. Just put this just along there. Take it to the edges a bit. So oh. these are probably not going to go lengthwise. No, they? right? On mine they don't. They go. So yesterday we dismantled the arithmetic unit at Nigel's laboratory in Cambridge. We bolted it across this morning and now it's time to reassemble it in the racks that are waiting for it here at the National Museum of Computing. There are 29 chassis in total that make up the arithmetic unit. They've all got to be put in their correct locations, which is what we're doing now. And then once they're all in place, Nigel has the tedious task of redoing all the back wiring. There we go. Now we're way, way out. Yeah. But they sort of typically had bowed out a bit and needed to actually push the, yeah. push the racks in yeah. in the middle. So it's actually, I've got a vertical problem here, not a horizontal one, right. which I've not had previously. And I don't see how it can be, but... Oh, I see how it can be. It can be if you get a big chunk of wire stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike modern computers that um, had very simplified kinds of wiring that we used to call a bus, with EDSAC everything goes from point to point, so it's like doing knitting, in fact it's worse.